We're wrapping up our Bible reading for 2022, where we've been focused on being zealous for good deeds. And this week, we're in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and I'm just at a loss, Jeff. I have no idea why you would choose (laughs) this text to talk about being zealous for good deeds. Well, this is Paul's great analogy of the body. And the body is made of many parts, and a body does not function or live unless each part of the body renders to the body its unique abilities. And while, yes, Paul was originally talking in the context of miraculous spiritual gifts in this section of Corinthians, the the analogy holds, right, that the church is a body, and we need to be looking at ourselves, again, not all trying to be the same thing or judging each other for not doing what we do or feeling guilty because someone else does something better than we do, but being honest about what part of the body we are and making our contribution to the body in our own you know, unique scriptural ways. He does use the figure in other places. He uses uh, the same figure in Romans 12, mm-hmm. for That's example, right. That's right. where you have non-miraculous gifts mm-hmm. in the mix there. Same and so, principle, though. Yeah, so I think, I think really 1 Corinthians 12 is sort of a more narrow application of the broader f- yeah. uh, principle in Romans 12, where, where you have... Uh, this idea that a body is going to be made up of many members and not all of them are going to have the same function, which seems to me to be the point of emphasis. We're supposed to understand that 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 I have a place. Maybe that's a good right. beginning point for us. Uh, there, there is some way that I can be a meaningful part of what of what this body, right. the church family, does. Right. And again, not every part of the body even does as much as other parts of the body. That's not how we judge, you know, by the amount of work done or it's it's each part doing what is unique to itself. You know, my fingernails don't do as much as my legs do, but my fingernails have a role. And so it's, it's, in some ways, it's kind of like what we talked about Acts chapter 6, right, where the apostles with the, the controversy over the Jewish widows, and, and they just said it's not good for us to leave you know, the work that we're doing to, to serve, not because it wasn't important to feed the widows, but because um, at the end of the day, they knew what part of the body they were. And their part, their role was to, you know, again, keep on spreading the word. And, and so whether it's through their work of prayer and then their work of teaching, that was their part in the body. And we needed to go find find the parts of the body who could do this work and put them to work doing that. So it's interesting that, and, and, and he bears this out as he goes on through this context in chapter 14, that we tend to emphasize certain things, one work above another. That's right. And so in this context in Corinth, evidently uh, tongue speaking That's right. was a really big deal. And I think Paul does a masterful job, particularly in chapter 14, of, of mapping out how at least in certain settings, uh, for example, the gift of prophecy would be a far superior gift, absolutely, than the gift of of, of tongue speaking. Though yeah. each each had their purpose, and I mention that only because I think we tend to do the same things. I think I think we tend to elevate certain gifts and uh, treat them as more important or more significant than others, uh, when in reality uh, we may be overlooking works that even have greater value. I've I've made the comment, for example, that I am certain that there have been some gatherings where I preached where people would have held up that part, the preaching part. That's one part we tend to elevate. Uh, I can guarantee you that there was some widow quietly talking to someone in the back after the service who was having a more important impact and accomplishing more than I accomplished with that sermon. Oh, absolutely. No, I think that's exactly right. So so I think that we need to be careful about saying, well, you know, I can't preach or I can't lead singing or I'm not a Bible class teacher. Right. And for that reason, thinking there isn't anything for me to do. No. And again, to use the analogy of the body, sometimes the most important functions of the body to sustaining life, the purpose of the body, are the unseen parts. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, we focus on the face and the eyes and the you know the more comely parts, and yet without the internal organs and all of their ugliness and you know and, and awkwardness, you, we wouldn't live. My body can live without my arm or my hand. My body can't live without my heart or my lungs. Well, and even even you know things that aren't as significant as your your heart and lungs, you know, try functioning without your big toe. That's right. It's not that you can't, but uh, but but it certainly alters and hinders. Right. You know, and and I think that's that's a great point to make about the body of Christ that um, that I may indeed have a function that isn't 
all that remarkable. Or visible. Or visible. And yet matters. Uh, Crucially matters. Yeah. Well, you know, we talked um, we talked about Dorcas a few weeks ago. Yeah. Who made undergarments for widows. And 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 while in some ways that wasn't nearly as remarkable as work Paul did to plant the gospel in new cities, uh, there was a group of people in her town right. that were extraordinarily blessed by what she did. So I guess the end of all of this, folks, is we need to quit worrying about what our place is in the body and how significant or recognized our gift is, and be content that God gifted me with the ability to serve in this way. Yeah, And I ought to be content to do that. So think about the body. Let's think about our place in the body as we read First Corinthians 12 this week and make sure we find out where we fit and do what we can do.